Hi everybody, welcome to our Cake Foo Master Series. We are really excited to be here today. Uh, we have had to delay our training a week on, on my behalf, and I apologize for that. Uh, but today we have uh, the very talented Marsha Winbeckler with us. I have to say talented and beautiful. My oh. goodness, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. It, it's always I. I think you and Roland are just like the the cutest Kate couple uh, ever. Oh, <laughs> I think you're. You guys are the. I, I don't know. My my husband's not quite the cake decorator yet, but he he's uh, working on it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that I think that him seeing you guys and having known you guys a little bit has inspired him. To, to want to get to do some cake decorating so that we can be a little cake decorating couple too. <laughs> <laughs> we get emails sometimes from other couples where they say, oh, it's so nice to see a couple that works together and that's what we're trying to aspire to. So it's 24-7 for us but, and it has been yep. so for, since we've been married. So it works out well. It's nice. It really is nice. I mean, uh, we don't always do the cake decorating together, but we do cake food together. So, yeah. I mean, we we do work together, and it's 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 nice to have someone to, you know, that you can always work with. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and know their skills and know how they're going to react to something. It's it's nice to have that. So it is nice. It is nice. Well, and you guys make an excellent team. So. Thank you. Yes, and so welcome, Marsha. We're really happy to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to know a little bit about you, um, get to know where you came from, how you started cake decorating, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, go. I, yeah, you got started. I got started to do my son's birthday cakes, actually, and uh, uh, just sort of had a kind of a talent for it and really enjoyed it. Uh, even in my beginner class, some of the other students were was were asking the instructor um, why my cakes were turning out so nice, <laughs> and theirs weren't. <laughs> but uh, it was just sort of you know I had a kind of a natural ability for it. And sometimes when you have something uh, that you seem to have an ability for, you you enjoy it more too. So and I did. So I started taking more classes, and within a year I was teaching classes, which you know kind of surprised me that I got to ask to teach so soon and then within a year after that I was um, market coordinator for Wilton actually in the Houston uh, Texas area and there were about a hundred teachers that I worked with in the hundred mile radius of Houston and at the time that was their biggest sales market in the country and I was in charge of tra training and um, you know any problems the teachers had and things like that so and I had to I was a teacher all that time myself so I knew what they were dealing with and and then I started attending the ISIS conventions and at one of those conventions I met, met uh, Roland and I, I always tease and say I, I went from the Wilton way to the Winbeckler way so <laughs> <laughs> I love that <laughs> that's great <laughs> So you you and Roland met at at ICES. Yes. Mm -hmm. How exciting. Yes, we. Uh, I lived in Houston, and he lived up in the Seattle area, and he was born and raised up there. And um, so I moved uh, to Seattle, and we got married, and we lived there for about the first eighteen years or so that we were married, and then about ten years ago we moved to Redding, California. So we're in Northern California now. We're um, out of the rain and the traffic of Seattle, but it was beautiful up there. But uh, happy to have a little more sunshine here. Mm -hmm. Well, that that is nice to get some sunshine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, you've you've made some, you know, had some really great accomplishments throughout your career. Also, As, I mean, I I know that you and Roland work together so closely, but you both have your own separate uh, things that you have done. Um, yes, uh, we both have our own separate books and things that we do and, um, you know, classes, uh, for instance, the craftsy classes, uh, you know, we did separate classes on that. We do teach together a lot, too, at mm -hmm. uh, many classes and things like that, and usually one of us would kind of be the primary teacher for the class, but the other one um, 
you know, knows exactly how to help everyone. Or mm -hmm. sometimes we, I call it tag teaming. We'll uh, <laughs> uh, one of us will show a section of the class, and then the other one the next one, and we can be pre uh, preparing it while the other one is uh, showing something. The other one can be preparing. So it it works out well to to kind of know each other's techniques and things. So, um, but yes, we uh, you know I do my own demonstrations at ISIS. I've demonstrated ISIS for years and uh, have my own three three books and a DVD on candy making actually and um, I'm a judge on the Cakes We Bake uh, cake community uh, for their contests that they have and taught at the Wilton School in Chicago and I was on the uh, board of the uh, the editorial board of American Cake Decorating Magazine for uh, two years just recently and um, did the ISIS newsletter. I was the ISIS newsletter editor for over 13 years so I've I've done quite a bit in in the years that I've been in cake decorating so. That's great that's wonderful yeah I you know I think that the accomplishments that you've had and, and you and Roland have also done uh, like the TLC thing together uh, Food Network also is that you want to yeah, um, Roland was the challenger on those, and then I was the for like the TLC. They have three assistants, and one of them is the lead assistant, and um, I was the lead assistant on those two. And the Food Network one was a two-person team, and that was the both of us. And uh, again, it was nice to, you know, know what the other one could do, and we could put, you know, Roland. Okay, this is your responsibility. You do this. I don't have to worry about it. He could be worrying about the the figures or the faces or whatever and mm -hmm. on the um, TLC when the one that was the uh, Ringling Brothers or where, where uh, we had the circus clown and the magician's hat because the, it was their the theme was sort of a magi magician theme or a magic theme for that um, their circus show that they were doing and so I had the magician's hat that um, I was kind of in charge of me and the other assistants doing and so we you know just took it and ran from there and that was a pretty big job actually because that hat was about two feet tall and then the, just the brim of the hat which was made all out of modeling chocolate was about three or four feet wide oh, and it wow. had to, and it had to stand up on its own <laughs> and so uh, there's a there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes on those shows that uh, uh, just the prep work is mm -hmm. astronomical that most people don't realize. Yeah, especially absolutely. Especially if they believe, you know, what the shows make it look like, that you just show up there and are given and, an idea <laughs> and run with it. And you it. magically <laughs> have that one thing. That <laughs> All the right tools and supplies. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny to watch those shows, you know, being being behind the scenes a little bit and watching the shows and and just think oh come on you guys yeah, where did that tool come from or that piece of equipment or supply but yeah <laughs> uh, and then we also have our um, website where we sell cake decorating supplies it, that just sort of grew out of us teaching where students want the supplies that we're using and mm -hmm. so we have our supply website uh, cakesuppliesplus.com and uh, that keeps us pretty busy uh, the time we're not teaching uh, that keeps us busy you know stocking order you know shipping orders etc managing yeah. it so mm -hmm. well that's it's nice to have that though because when you are teaching there are people that are going to ask where did you get this where do I find this so if you have you know like a kit put together or just a place where you can say you know all the stuff that you found in class you can go here and look at it and, yeah. and find it and so. we even carry we have over 10,000 items on our website so we oh, wow. have pretty much everything cake decorating related we even have the sheeters and the Ag Bay levelers and you know, we have yeah me too <laughs> doesn't everybody <laughs> love sheeters too but <laughs> yeah. don't have they're, one of those yet. yeah they're a little more expensive <laughs> I don't have one either but I'm able to use them when we go to the teach at the bakery shows and things they always provide us with one so that's, oh, that's nice and, and we sell them on our site awesome 
Wonderful. Well, today you're going to be teaching um, uh, how to make a fondant bow. Uh, the method that I learned for a fondant bow is, is different than this, and I, I actually really like this one a lot oh, better. Good. So glad to hear so, that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I do like this better. And then um, also, you're going to be talking about some of the you know logistics of uh, structural supports and things like that. Yeah, with just some of the planning that does go on behind the scenes of people are interested in any of that because that's yeah. the part you don't see you know uh -huh. you see the cakes sort of going together on on the shows but you don't really see all the prep work that goes on behind the scenes uh -huh. well and that's really interesting to people who you know dream someday of being able to do something like that so yeah. uh, first of all these are some of the pictures from the the craftsy class that you've got that's just come out so yes ruffles Fondant uh, ruffles, pleats, and drapes is the name yes. of the class, uh -huh. and these are the ruffle these are the ruffles. Uh, styles that uh, I show in the class. And uh, the first three photos there of the folded style ruffles, and I have a little bit different way that I do them so you don't build up a lot of bulk uh, that some of the other methods I've seen do. And um, and then the little peach colored cake there, that's the frilling or thinning uh, type. Ruffles and mm -hmm. uh, and the ruffle flower there, so it's the class is going very well too. That's so. good. Yeah. That's good. Well, you know, ruffles are so huge right now. I I posted a a tutorial, uh, a set of tutorials uh, that on on the website that other cake decorators have done on just how to make a ruffle flower and in oh, uh -huh. just seven different ways to make a ruffle flower and that exploded I couldn't believe how many people just came to see that you know so this is such a huge thing right now and so to to learn from someone as experienced as you on how to do something like this I think that's it's definitely you will definitely use it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So and there's like I said there's a couple of different ways to do the ruffles on there uh -huh. so it's not just yeah. one way or another and then yeah. um, this is on the pleating in the class. That's the center section of the class. And that originally was not going to be part of the class. And I asked Crafty oh, yeah. if I could add that. It was just going to be ruffles and drapes. And um, I asked if I could add pleats. And they um, thought that would be a good idea because, it, you know, they're all kind of fabric effects, actually. Yeah. Well, it just kept growing because there's so many different types of pleats and there's vertical pleats, horizontal pleats, box pleats, knife pleats, so it became a quite a large section of the class and, and even just how to accomplish pleats to get them to go up over the top of the cake without mm -hmm. building up a huge bulk in the center and I um, uh, had one lady just message me on the uh, class platform last night that the one cake up in the left corner there is actually why she purchased the class. She wanted mm -hmm. to learn how to do that cake and there's templates and instructions in the class on that one but um, that one was just sort of an afterthought. Craftsy asked if I could have that one prepared ahead before the class started so that it would be in uh, you know, all the pictures and in the background and everything and so mm -hmm. But that's, it's a nice design, I think. It is, it is, and that's very popular too right now. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. It's very and very elegant. I, yeah, yeah, it's simple but elegant. And by mm -hmm. simple, I don't mean that it's super simple to do, but it's, um, uh, you know, it just looks clean and nice. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, definitely, definitely. And then the draping. Yes, and we have you know all the different kind of drapes, which includes swag drapes, and then the drop drapes, and I um, include even different ways to do the drop drapes. You know, shorter ones that don't drape down on the surface, and then the longer ones, and ones with plain edges, one with ones with the um, uh, you know edges with designs like shown there, and then cascades, and so it covers you know pretty much every type of draping that that you can do on the cake. So. How to keep them clean, how to keep them nice and fluid. I see a lot of uh, drapes on pictures if you just Google, you know, Fonda mm -hmm. Cascades or whatever, where they look, they almost look like the fabric was too limp. They, uh, and uh, so I kind of explain some ways to avoid that. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's just that people don't, you know, they let their fondant stick together and that really kind of gives it a real rough look, too. So. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely, definitely class worth getting, in my opinion. I think because these are such current trends right now, and every every wedding cake is going to have some form of this on it, almost. Yes. <laughs> you know, so. I even at the end of the class, I mentioned how I uh, um, handle the joins too. So you see some of the uh, some of them are molded pieces, but some of them are you know little ruffle puffs and stuff. I show how to to do at the end of the class and. Oh, fun. Uh, just because you're going to have the joined areas that you're going to have mm -hmm. to cover up, so might as I well show, how to show different ways that I've done that. So it sounds like you covered it all. <laughs> that's great. I do. It was a busy few days taping the class. I'm sure. sure. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, and, and like I said at the be very beginning, we are going to be doing a giveaway of this crafty class. So uh, make sure you stick around to the end, uh, and then um, we'll we'll talk you through that that giveaway when we get to it. So uh, let's go ahead and get on with our our bow, and I'll just let you go ahead and take over, and I'll just. Uh... Okay. Sounds good. Um, I have. For color, I'm going to make a gold uh, colored bow here. And what I did is um, used a, sort of a, a golden yellow uh, paste color for it. And, uh, or you can make that using lemon yellow and just a tiny touch of uh, red. And, uh, because I, and then I'm going to dust it with some super gold luster dust. But if you don't start out with white, you're going to get a much golder metallic -y looking gold appearance versus just starting out with white fondant. So mm -hmm. that's why I started there. And then for rolling it, uh, you want to have, have it fairly thin and so I'm suggesting here that you either use a roller that has the guides if you're not familiar with the different thicknesses or you can use a pasta machine and I think I might have a picture there of it going through the pasta machine but um, I uh, run it through, if I'm using a pasta machine, I run it through about to a number three. If I'm going to texture it, use a textured rolling pin to uh, thin it up just a little bit more, or a number four if uh, if I'm not going to texture it. So. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, and there's the pasta machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a, uh, I love the pasta machine, either that type or a separate one, but either type you don't really want the manual kind because you end up with one hand having to crank <laughs> and you really need two hands to get the material through the pasta machine so any electric form of a pasta machine is what mm -hmm. you want so yes it is very difficult to do the <laughs> manual <laughs> mm -hmm. yes and then I um, I like the dusting pump brushes for when I'm applying uh, the um, any of the dust luster suit or I even actually use this for cornstarch. I when I'm uh, need something just I don't use cornstarch that much for um, like for applying my fondant because it dries it out. But there are times when you don't want the fondant sticking together, and any of the dust or cornstarch will keep that from happening. And so I I just figured if it, if these brushes work for the lusters, uh, why wouldn't they work for cornstarch? And they work very well. So. And this just give it gives it kind of a metallic look here. So okay. and and it's going to keep it from sticking. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I find I I like the idea that you put the luster on beforehand. I really do like that. That's great. Okay. And then I'm using a textured rolling pin here. I'm going to give it even more. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat today. That's fine. <laughs> even more. We have of to a, deal with that. <laughs> even more of a um, textured. Uh, or a, even more of a fabric look by using a textured rolling pin. So I roll it out a little bit thinner uh, using the textured rolling pin. And then uh, once I'm finished with that, I need to um, turn it over. So I've turned it over now. And then it, um, because I want the, the textured side up, and so I dust it again with the, either cornstarch or, in this case, the super gold luster dust. And okay. And then I flip it over. Right. Again, that keeps it from sticking. So I've flipped it over here. Right. And a good uh, way to gauge uh, how large your bow is going to be, it's kind of hard to visualize that when you have a big strip uh, rolled out there. And so what I, uh, you can fold in the two sides 
and that will show you the approximate size that bow would be with the uh, for the strip size that you have. So it's just a kind of an easy way to get a visual of how how long your bow is going to be. Okay. And for this particular bow, it was about 10 inches, the strip was about 10 inches long and about two and a half inches wide. And so you'll get kind of an idea when, when this bow is finished on. And so it really about a quarter of that length is how, um, how long each half of the bow will be. So um, it'll be about two and a half inches for each puff of the bow on each side. So. Okay, great. And then you want to clean up the edges because those are going to show. So if you have a cutter that doesn't cut real cleanly, I, I love my palette knife. I have, uh, that's always been my favorite cake decorating tool is a really good palette knife. I have one that's catching up as a close second here recently though, and that's the, a new cutter that I've gotten. Um, and it's a, made by Wilton, and it's their, uh, their double wheeled pastry wheel and it has the scalloped on one edge and the mm -hmm. the plain one on the other but the reason I, I like it more than any other like a pizza cutter or anything that I had been using before it seems to be polished so well that it almost never you know how you get the the remnants uh, and it doesn't cut a, cut a clean edge then afterwards mm -hmm. this one is almost constantly clean and you get a nice clean edge so that might not even be necessary if I would have been using the, the Wilton cutter when I um, took this picture but know. I wasn't then Great. so but uh, and it also has little spacers on each side so there's no wobbling at all for it. yeah so. yeah I do use that uh, pastry wheel a lot, mm -hmm. that same one that you're mentioning. So I, I like that. Wilton has, some, Wilton has some really good products. Yeah, they've really came out with a lot in the last several years. The last so. little while, yeah, they have. Mm -hmm. I, I actually went into the Michael store just to look around. I haven't actually gone into the Michael store. I usually order everything online or, oh, yeah. or you know, run over to Chef Rubber because they're so close. But yeah, you're lucky you're in Las Vegas where you have access <laughs> yeah. to a lot of the equipment. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I I couldn't believe how many new things that I saw there. It was yeah. and and not just Wilton. They have all different you know all different brands. Yeah, they now. have. Yeah, they have a lot of several different brands now at Michaels. Mm -hmm. and we carry a lot of the Wilton stuff on our website too. So um, oh, for anybody that's you know out and lives out in the uh, country or something. <laughs> yeah, and it's totally you stuff. You we ship everywhere. We ship worldwide because we have so many YouTube videos that uh, it's not unusual in one day to have three orders going internationally. So mm -hmm. I've been in that position before, where I've been in a place where you just you don't have access to everything. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. So I what I've done here is now I I fold over the strip in half. And I'm just going to lightly run my hand along the edge. You don't want to crease it uh, firmly because that will almost cut it. So you just want to make a slight little crease um, so that uh, when you unfold it, that you'll see where the center is. And okay. That's all I'm really trying to do here. And then at the center, I fold, uh, unfold it again. And then use uh, a water and brush. I'm using a water pin here for anybody who's not familiar with that. That's a, a, a little uh, kind of a artist type pen that um, you fill with water and uh, so then it just applies the water right. You don't have to dip it in anything. It's up mm -hmm. in the handle the water is. But I'm just putting a strip on each side of the half line that I made. A little uh, strip of water there. And then when I um, fold it in then the, the two end pieces will attach to the water section there. That's and um, cake decorators a lot of time they kinda don't know when to use water, when to use piping gel. Uh, uh, if you just need something to stick and not really you know be like super glued instantly, uh, water what it does is it just turns the sugar that's in the fondant or buttercream or whatever it turns it into a simple syrup and so that's why water works as the glue uh, because it's not really the water it's the water that's turning the sugar into a syrup on the surface so mm -hmm. so it's just attaching it there in the center All right. 
And then I, I turned it over. I didn't I guess I didn't include the picture, but I turn it over so that the seam side is down. Okay. And and then I want to fold it in the center. And then I fold each side down. So that you always have your cut edges going down. Okay. And that, that gives you a much more finished look. So that's the the back side of it there. Right. It's already looking good. Yeah. <laughs> and when you you want to puff it up and you can use uh, I actually like to use little pieces of PVC pipe but you can use crumpled um, uh, you know like saran wrap or wax paper roll, rolls of wax mm -hmm. paper work well but the PVC pipe uh, I find works really nice the only uh, warning I'd kind of mention is that if there's any of the barcodes or anything on there you want to sand those off and wash it first because if your fondant is damp on the inside you can actually transfer some of those markings to your uh, to mm -hmm. the fondant on the inside and you can see it so yeah you definitely don't, don't want to do that <laughs> no <laughs> so anytime you use it uh, to dry anything you want to make sure you don't have any of those markings on your on your pipe I really do like the the PVC pipe idea I know that I've I, I've judged several competitions where they've had bows where you can look down inside and you see bits of either cotton or tissue or something like that that, that got stuck in there and they oh. can't get it all out. And that, I, you know... Yeah, that kind of takes away from it. It does. It mm -hmm. does. So you want to make sure that you've got something, like you said, either, you know, waxed paper or, you know... A, or a saran wrap or something that will come out all in one piece is what you want. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. And not, you not damage your bow on its way out. But uh, one advantage actually to using the PVC pipe here is that you can even stand it up on its end. You don't have to dry it flat. And yes. So you can stand yes. it up on its end and then both sides are drying. And uh, so that's one, one advantage too. Uh, the pipe versus using the other methods because mm -hmm. you have the nice flat uh, ends of the pipe. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Very handy. I use the, uh, for all my bows, even the uh, pom-pom style bows, uh, and I have a YouTube video on, on that style of bow also, but um, I use the PVC pipe. I have a rack I, I build and uh, actually have my husband build for me but <laughs> and we we even sell those on our site too the racks but oh cool um, yeah pre-made so for, just for those who don't want to do it or don't have you know a guy that can do it for them if they don't want to do it so mm -hmm. but then yeah. I'm trying kind of giving this bow one more final uh, brush with the gold luster dust there just to make it nice and metallic gold looking And the, then the knot, and um, the knot is pretty much a square. It's a little longer uh, one direction than the other, and the, the lo I have the longest side that's uh, facing uh, towards me. It's uh, parallel with the right and left sides of your screen is the longest side, the three-inch side there. And this one, you don't have to worry too much about whether your cut edges are really clean because they're all going to be folded back and you won't see them. So you don't really have to worry about it on that one. Okay. Now you see the texture on that, kind yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got a good enough if, screen. <laughs> yeah, if you get if you get your screen enlarged and. Okay. Okay, then I just dampen the two side edges and I um, uh, fold over the the backs just a tiny bit, just a quarter an inch or so, and mm -hmm. so that they won't be seen. And then I kind of do that accordion fold, like I did with the center of the bow, okay. on each end. I do that on each end. Not in the middle, though. Not in the middle. Mm -mm. Oh, because it kind of carries on into the in the center if you've got it on the ends and that's what it looks like in the center then. That looks very nice. It just kind of, you know, if you gather it on either side it, it creates... It, it's know, a softer becomes... look versus exactly. folding it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and of course that's what fabric would do. It would be a soft mm -hmm. sort of fold look. 
and then you just wrap it around and use water again to attach the two pieces in the back. Okay, looking very nice. Yeah, and I'm just showing here the comparison. I'm going to uh, make the uh, the ribbon tails, and I don't make these quite as wide as my bow is, just to avoid bulk. So they're about two thirds the width of my bow width. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, you can use, you know, just a knife to cut it. But diamond uh, shape cutters actually make a really nice uh, way to cut it twice as fast and it's uh, a clean real clean look yeah, plus nice you can clean. even want even just one cutter you can get several different sizes by moving it up or down so very nice I like the I like the look of that yeah that's what it looks okay. like when they're cut All right. and then the I uh, just fold it again like and again with the cut sides going down always that does really make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And there's the finished bow. You just set the dried bow with the knot on top of the two ribbon tails and you get a nice finished bow. And I think you can see the, the texture there a little better Yeah. in that picture too. And uh, I think that the bow, you know, looks really nice and if you didn't want it to look, you know, quite as perfectly rounded on the ends you could use the uh, saran wrap or whatever to give it more of a, a crumpled look and uh, the, uh, the I think it turned out nice and you always want to add a little bit of a um, to the tails kind of yeah. uh, fluff them up a little bit make them look more realistic you don't want them to just be flat on the cake so added a little bit of a, a fold or a bend in them so that they look a little more natural like ribbon uh -huh. might fall. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. It's it's just perfect. <laughs> and like you said, you can change it, you know, uh, depending on how you dry it, it mm -hmm. change the style or the look of it. Exactly. Or, you yeah. know, by the texture or the color or Right. There's a lot of different ways to make it look different. And mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to add the tails. You could, you, you know, it's just a lot of different ways to to do it. So well, very and, nice. Thank you. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our um, our uh, wonderful art pieces that you guys have done, and and you can go ahead and talk a little bit about those and and the things you wanted to add to them. Well, the uh, this was the cake we did for the ISIS uh, convention last year that was in Reno, and we were asked oh a year more in advance to do uh, the display cake for the convention and each year uh, they have uh, some kind of a display cake and sometimes it's by a committee or sometimes you know it's one particular decorator in charge and mm -hmm. they'd ask us ahead but um, there some of these the techniques on the cake it was a western theme for the Reno show and of course Roland being the, the master at the figures he knew he was going to do a lot of the the western you know style figures but then we would come to other areas that was like now how are we going to accomplish this you know um, the uh, there's we wanted to cover it the base cake is the shape of Nevada because it was in Reno mm -hmm. and but we wa didn't want the board to just be you know foil covered or something like that so we had uh, we wanted to come up with a tool leather effect for that and so I did lots of research on you know how we could accomplish that and I ended up finding a texture stamp a picture. <clears throat> let's see if I can find that yeah it might be oh, out of sequence go. there we are there yeah uh, a texture stamp that uh, we uh, stamped into it and that had to be done for these gigantically long strips <laughs> and <Wow. laughs> with uh, quite a bit of pre uh, pressure to, to get it in there nicely and then um, Roland came back with the airbrush and airbrushed it at an angle and uh, there were so many textures on this cake with the um, the tree trunk that was uh, it was a pine tree that was native to uh, to Nevada and I think it's their state tree actually and brush bristlecone pine is uh, 
what, what we were going after on that, mm -hmm. and uh, so we uh, had to texture that. And then the uh, the wood grain, like you were showing the the little book pedestal cake mm -hmm. that we did, all the wood grain in that. And we actually now teach a class just on on texturing. Okay. And um, that particular uh, portion of the cake with the the book and the pedestal, that was sort of an afterthought. Most of the rest of the cake was done about a month or so ahead. But we really didn't have any. We knew that people were not going to be able to get super close uh, mm -hmm. to check out a lot, totally the detail because they always have stanchions around. But we wanted to explain kind of some of the things about the cake, but yet it still have it be part of the cake. And so uh, Roland said, "Well, maybe we could do like a book cake and and a pedestal, and the whole pedestal and everything is all covered in fondant, and uh, then." I had to come up with a technique on, I used uh, icing image sheets for mm -hmm. the uh, pages there, the, the top two pages, but those are, they're quite flexible and they usually lay pretty flat, so I had to come up with a way using heat to get them to hold that kind of uh, rippled page uh, look, so that was another technique that we had to come up just out of necessity, and uh -huh. the a little stamp box in, in front uh, is kind of to look like a, a lacquered stamp box and the marbled, that one has more of a, a, a smooth but yet marbled wood grain effect. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to research all the stamps of the era to make sure we had the right, <laughs> the right postage for, because they were going uh, for the between 1863 to 1885 I think is kind of the era the show was going after. And then the, uh, the inkwell there is isomalt, and mm -hmm. I had to construct that from different, uh, combining some different pieces of sugar, and then even opening up the top with a hot, hot raw metal rod to make it so that the, uh, the quill would fit in there. And Roland did the quill out of uh, gum paste, and uh, so there's just a lot of different techniques and research, just the research that goes into doing something huge like this, but there's mm -hmm. also tons of labor. I mean, that was yeah. uh, Roland's job for <laughs> quite some time doing the figures and the, and the, the armature. It all had to come apart uh, to get to Reno, which is about uh, 300 miles the route we had wow. to take from where we are, and um, we, were, we could have gotten there 100 miles uh, closer. But that is over mountainous, old, two-lane roads, and we didn't want to go the rough oh, route. Oh yeah, so we, no, you was, you <laughs> so we went a hundred miles farther, but to uh, uh, freeways and little smoother less roads, coot less curvy, and uh -huh. uh, but for instance, he built the frame that for that that eagle on top is uh, life, uh, excuse me, life size for uh, kind of a smaller female eagle, and it. Uh, just the fondant feathers that are on that, there, I, I counted that we made about a thousand fondant oh, feathers wow. just for the eagle. And uh, so the, the tree bark that, goes on, that went on the tree trunk, those were about six to eight foot long strips that we did. And that's why it takes two <laughs> at least to, yeah, at to least. handle uh, <laughs> wow. something like that. But, um, and. Wow. Uh, I used the um, silhouette cutter to cut the uh, just the templates for the lettering on there, mm -hmm. and then we cut those out of um, like the Rice Krispie uh, cereal treats, and and then covered them in fondant. And, well, textured the fondant first and covered them, but just ha you know using the the cutter machine to be able to cut out templates was nice to. Uh, cut out the the old western style lettering that we wanted to use. So that's so impressive. Well, and and this doesn't even show the little uh, electronic parts that you had. You had a little mouse poking out and, and yeah, things they, like that. the one rock that's just left of the R in Reno. There, um, Roland had a little motor that were and there was a little mouse inside that it would p pop up and down, peeking out of the rock and. Uh, uh, we had uh, even a bird chirping that uh, 
that um, I don't, I'm not sure if the bird continued to chirp the entire time because he was ran on battery, but he would chirp as mm -hmm. people would walk by. It was motion. Uh, oh, cool. so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Motion triggered. <laughs> so. Love it. Yeah, this, this cake really needed to be seen in person. I mean, just looking at it, it is spectacular, but to see it in person, I, I was floored, just blown away. By, it was by the about, amount of detail that went into this. I think it was about nine feet tall on its pedestal, and its pedestal wasn't that tall. It was about mm -hmm. maybe a foot or foot and a half. Yeah. Uh, that, also, that's another thing, just the pedestal. We had to build the pedestal and, and then do all the skirting for around the pedestal because we knew the hotel wasn't going to have something for a, you know, yeah. a short, <laughs> something like that. So, yeah. so there's a, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that goes on, and it, it took us about a day or day and a half uh, just to set it up and so you can see the whole the whole pedestal there to the right that's all covered in fondant and airbrushed and and the there's the pedestal covered with the the blue kind of satin fabric that my sewing machine had to come in handy for for that uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we had little um, icing image butterflies that were you know were on the cake and mm -hmm. Uh, had a I did a cocoa painting of the, um, uh, the that hotel used to have a gigantic sculpture of the, the uh, Pony Express. They don't have it anymore, mm -hmm. but just sort of a tribute to the hotel. They do have still big sculptures of horses out front, but uh, they um, so I did a. Uh, a cocoa painting, which is I have a book on cocoa painting, and so I'm kind of known for that. So I did a uh, cocoa painting of the Pony Express uh, figure in there. I think we have there. Yeah, right there. there's the mm -hmm. Pony Express guy. So, and there, uh, I really like the horse on that one, and the guy, there, the original um, Pony Express logo is a real simplistic uh, drawing. And um, it almost looks like, you know, because this was way back <laughs> when, mm -hmm. when they came up with their logo. And so it's almost like somebody had a cousin or something like, well, you draw us a logo. That's kind of what it looked like. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I try to, try to improve on the shading of it a little bit uh, more than was there. <laughs> but <laughs> it, uh, but I, I, I really like the horse. I, I love horses to begin with. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's spectacular, Thank spectacular. You. All right, and here's one of the TLC cakes that you did. Yes, this is the, the Ringling Brothers uh, one that I was talking about, and there's the hat uh, that I was uh, talking about that was covered. And, and covering something like that in that vertical that's that high, uh, about two feet or so, uh, it's really difficult with fondant because a lot of... Uh, a lot of times the fondant will want to start sagging down the uh, the cake and mm -hmm. so it took some experimenting and then also the that color is kind of difficult to come up with but that was you know the color that we wanted the magician's hat and mm -hmm. then the uh, the brim of that hat is all uh, modeling chocolate and so it's really um, it's hard to get that much modeling chocolate to stand up on its own and it couldn't be too thin or it would, uh, you know, you couldn't get it that wide to stand up and uh, luckily the temperature was right in the studio. They had it chilled down pretty well and then we had a walk-in cooler that we could put things in but it was only in the cooler for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then it had to hold the shape for hours afterwards uh -huh. and on that one Roland had a motor on top with a uh, cake on top spin around and uh, we were this was the last episode of the first season of the ultimate cake off and we had the tallest cake of the whole season and uh, and the crew were we also won the tasting challenge on it and Very the good. crew were lined up <laughs> afterwards <laughs> for, <laughs> oh, <what you> <laughs> they wanted to eat because we you know had a tasting cake that the judges all had to eat and it was gone in like 20 minutes one of our oh, wow. other assistants told us uh, she had to go back to the restroom and saw that it was gone and nothing flat and then they were lined up at the end of the taping when you have to dismantle these things which is heartbreaking after you've mm -hmm. uh, you know spent actually you know maybe a month preparing for it and uh, 
but some of the, the planning that goes into these, uh, just getting the materials uh, for something like this, and we are in kind of a remote town. We're in Redding, California, and it's there's no other large towns for about a 150 mile radius from us. Sacramento is about 150 miles south of us. So supplies, uh, we would need to order in uh, supplies or special equ special equipment, and then it would um, arrive. And if that, you know, it might take two weeks for it to arrive. And then if that didn't work out, then you're starting from scratch again. So uh, sometimes just the remoteness remoteness of your location is a, a obstacle you have to overcome on some of these challenges yeah. too and the fact that um, you should do at least one and preferably two complete run-throughs of these and this one yeah. we did did two and so then you're out of supplies and materials and have to get it all in <laughs> <Yeah>. again <laughs> and uh. figure out what, what worked and what didn't work and uh, so uh, and we had a nice young couple locally that, that helped us uh, you know, do the run-throughs. They gave up some of their time and uh, to do it, and uh, that was nice. It was a young um, guy decorator who had only been decorating six months at a local bakery, and we had them come along, and I think they got to learn a lot from it, and uh, we enjoyed sharing with them. Well, good, good. It's... We look a little tired there, and that's because we are. Yeah, because you were. <laughs> oh my goodness, that sure can wear you out. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the roller derby one that you did. Yes, and this one also the the top of it spin around and it had the logos of the two teams that um, you know that were competing in the uh, roller derby challenge for that evening. And then the big roller skates, the wheels uh, roller skate the wheels went around. Uh -huh. And um, Bolin had little figures again there on the uh, on the um, rink. He had these cute figures that he had modeled uh, to go around and it ended up that one that was it we had within the last 15 minutes or so we're still covering cakes and getting ready and actually we were the only one completed when the time was up and oh, wow. uh, <clears throat> they extended the time which <laughs> to me seems like it shouldn't have been fair but they um, extended the time but the um, uh, we're getting right down to the wire and some of our assistants were you know kind of trying to cut corners and I said no we we don't put out cakes that that don't look good so mm -hmm. we got to do it again even if we've only got 15 minutes so I went over and recovered one of the cakes and because you know if a cake's not done well sometimes people who own bakeries and things they wonder why the it, a certain style or something doesn't sell well a lot of times it's your customers saying they either don't like that design or they don't like the way it's decorated so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and especially on national television you want it to look yeah. good exactly. <laughs> and that's the hardest thing is because you're in such a time crunch you are and, and, and you, you know you have to sacrifice a few things but you don't want your quality of work to go down so no and that's what I that's, that's what I said tough. you know we just can't put that out with our names on it and especially since mm -hmm. we try to teach people how to do it nice we want it to look nice so yeah. this is something that um, uh, we did for a local grand opening for uh, a liquor store that was opening up here in Reading and they found us on the um, uh, Wikipedia apparently at the time uh, Roland was the most famous person living in our town <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even more than uh, uh, Clint Eastwood has a kind of a summer home here and uh, Merle Haggard lives in the area and but Roland was coming up top of the list and said, oh, wow. we're going to have these people do this <laughs> do our grand opening cake that's so, great and this is kind of one of their signature things is their kegs that they rent with their their Bevmo logo on it, but all the mm -hmm. bottles there are made out of uh, sugar. The ice is made out of sugar. The beer mugs are um, cylinders of the rice cereal treats and uh, covered in fondant and airbrushed. All the grapes are handmade. Um, it, you know, a lot of work that went into those. And Absolutely. There yeah. was, uh, they had a um, there's there's the other one and that one this uh, if you go into their stores they have this clock that says time to bevmo and then each one of the numbers is actually you know some kind of a crazy 
figure character, uh, you know, like a martini glass or something next to mm. it. And uh, that was a, kind of hard to come up with. I didn't have a large format printer, edible image printer at the time, and uh, trying to get that large of an image uh, there. Uh, <laughs> I did it in two pieces, yeah. actually, and fit them together. And um, it's the, it spinned around, which they were amazed uh, when they got it. And then again, the isomalt, <laughs> isomalt, they didn't ask for that. That was just something we just sort of did. And again, more texturing. We tried to make the um, uh, main cake there look like a, uh, a bar top and uh, did the wood, wood textures and more grapes. They had, they had a theme for each day. One day was uh, wine and spirits, and the previous day was the beer and the wine. So we did two different days. We did these two cakes, and uh, the, uh, they had particular spirits that they wanted because they were sponsoring each, each day, and mm -hmm. so we had to uh, figure the shapes of those bottles and all their designs and everything. So it, uh, a lot of research went into that, too. And this was yeah. shortly... At, well, in the little shot glass there in front, that's uh, also isomalt, and the one on top, and the uh, the the brand of the uh, bourbon that was sponsoring is the one that's kind of the official mint julep for the Kentucky Derby. So we did a little mint julep cup there, and um, but both of those cakes were within just uh, a few days after we returned from uh, teaching at a baker's convention, and so we oh, wow. had to have a lot of our prep work done and you know like the bottles could be made ahead and things like that but uh, some of the work can only be done at the last minute so it was some long days and nights <laughs> mm -hmm. beforehand. So. <laughs> All right yeah that's that's the way we work isn't it through the night? Yes I know there are <laughs> days that I don't know what I wouldn't end. do if there wasn't <laughs> the calmness of the evenings sometimes but uh, you know that's that's how I work you know I put yes. my kids in bed and work through the night that's, that's what I did when I started when my kids were small was I got to do all my playing uh, when the kids would take naps or go to bed so that yep. was nice <laughs> yep all right well here's the recipe that you're sharing I I seriously am going to have to go home and make this I I love love peanut brittle but I, I love the fact that this is a softer version of it. Yeah, it, and I came up with this recipe after I'd gone to a holiday fair many years ago. And this recipe was actually in one of the newsletters that we used to do. And uh, the, uh, But it's the main portion of it is kind of similar to the insides of a Butterfinger candy oh, bar. Yum. And uh, so it's crunchy, but it's soft. You know, it it flakes apart, kind of melts in and, your mouth, and mm -hmm. and, uh, and then of course you have the peanuts that are in there, and it uh, really um, you know adds a nice also texture difference to it. So it um, the only uh, thing that you want to do is make sure you don't get any graininess, and you do that by washing down the sides of the um, the pan. Uh, mm -hmm. with a uh, brush and, and hot water to keep it and watch your temperature mm -hmm. which I believe is in the uh, section. You also have to um, yeah and you want to have some of that uh, you know pre-gathered together and uh, it has on there what items you should have uh, gathered in advance. Have your peanuts already and your peanut butter and your butter mixed together and, uh, and then you combine the rest of the ingredients and, and cook them and use a, um, a candy thermometer and it has a temperature there for heating it uh, that you want to heat it up to and and then you have to work very quickly and that's why you want to have all of your other ingredients ready and waiting because when you get the uh, candied portion of it ready you have to have all the other items ready to put in immediately and um, if you happen to have Gloves that you work with with isomalt, those come in really handy too to uh, uh, spread out the, the mixture because you don't want to burn yourself and it's going to be very hot. Uh, you can use a wooden spoon or silicone spatula or something to spread it around. Uh, but if you have gloves that you use for working with sugar, once you get it uh, poured out, you can use those to spread it also. Or if you have a silicone mat, you can actually lay that over the top and then use a rolling pin or something and spread it thinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I do a lot of times when I'm uh, making modeling chocolate. I spread it thin, and then it cools much quicker, and I can yeah. use it within a, within an hour or two. So, 
Well, we like we like eating things faster. So, <laughs> in fact, no, I have to tell you, my my husband is in the other room watching this. Uh huh. Make sure everything runs smoothly. And mm -hmm. he just sent me a message. He said, "We need to make that peanut brittle." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be making it. <laughs> yeah. For those and, of you uh, that uh, missed out writing down all the ingredients, I will be posting this on my website. Uh, there will be the replay available. You can watch through it again, or you know, go go over to the. Food website and it will be over there later on today. So. I can post it on our site too, Thanks. and because we have a, a cake tutorial and a candy tutorial uh, section on our website that has a you know our videos and our you know even just kind of basics of how to cook isomalt and all sorts of things. So I can post the the recipe on there also, and then people can get it too if they need to come and get it and. Uh, Anyway, it's really good, and it, it's a family favorite for, for my family. Awesome. I know it will be for mine, too. Thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> in advance. Um, okay, so we can only take a few questions because I really want to get to the giveaway. Um, so I will ask a few. Um, here's, here's one just to, to launch things off. We have Rolly asks, do you ever offer tailor-made individual classes? Uh, well, we get a lot of um, people that want those, and the, we usually we would. But the problem is with those is that it takes us as much time away from everything else to teach one student as it would ten, and so the price for those classes would be quite expensive because it would have to you know cover the time that. Uh, you know, as if we were teaching ten students, for instance. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why we usually don't do one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I, I'm sure though if they were able to gather a group of people and ask for something very specific that you would teach, I'm sure that. Oh yes, and know, we do have that happen, and uh, like you know, we're teaching a class after the ISIS convention this year that. Um, the uh, mother of cakes is organizing and she specifically wanted a pastry chef figure that we do so we're doing a class on a pastry chef mm -hmm. figure and uh, so yes if it's something in particular we we do do it so yeah there you go <laughs> and like I've uh, you know w back on Roland's training I said he's the jack of all trades I think the two of you combined you guys cover everything, really. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything you don't teach. <laughs> and when we first started corresponding with Craftsy, they said, oh my gosh, you guys do everything. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, we have uh, Kathy asks, what is the blue cutting mat that you used for the... Uh, that's a silicone uh, cutting mat, or a silicone... Um, mat and I, the reason I like it, I like the size of it and but they don't make that particular one anymore but now um, Atiko makes one that is uh, about a 24 by 24 mat it's a little bit lighter blue and a little bit thicker than that one uh, but it's really nice and has a nice smooth surface and uh, we have that on our site too but uh, I like the the reason I use the blue for most of my uh, YouTube videos and things is because of the nice contrast in the color and it shows up well and it makes a nice background but I also love the mat just for working on perfect okay we have someone that asks um, we'll take two more questions this okay. one says do you think you can put gum paste glue or Tylos glue in the water pen as long as you store it with the brush up and clean properly uh, actually I've tried that and it doesn't work too well because it dries in the bristles uh, quite a bit so because I'm always looking for something that's going to make things easier but in that case I didn't find it but that's not to say that somebody else might not figure out a way that that it does work and if you do make sure and let me know <laughs> go to our website and send us send an email all right um, let's see here's a and here's our, our last question I think this is a pretty good one uh, Claire says if you're making a bow and you want to have a medallion or decorative element in the middle do you leave out the middle puff um, holding the two sides of the bow together or do you glue the medallion straight onto the two you know the wings of the bow. Um, what I would do is you're going to even just gathering it there. You're going to have sort of a bulk that builds up. And what I would do is just lay it down and flatten that section a little bit, just in the area where your medallion or, or uh, um, 
brooch or whatever is going to go uh, to to give it a flat area to stick to. You could I wouldn't put the cent the bow center in the knot. I wouldn't put one in if you're going to have a, a a brooch or medallion that's going to cover that area. And so just flatten it in an area that's large enough for your uh, brooch or whatever to attach to. Perfect. Okay. All right. And then here is the things that are. Here are the things that are coming up with you. Uh, you will be teaching at Kate Camp in July. Uh, yeah. Let's see, you'll be teaching in August. Uh, is that? That's the one following the ISIS convention oh, in uh, that's Lexington, right. Kentucky, mm -hmm. the little pastry chef figure. And, and um, Mother of Cake. Mother, it, it's, uh, it's in Kentucky at a hotel, but she's. Oh, okay. Uh, Sponsored uh, she's by. One, right, sponsored okay. by her. Okay. And the, uh, the mini classes um, are. Uh, Actually, I see one line. The mini classes are actually in Las Vegas. Uh, the ones July 18th to 21st. They're in the Henderson, Las Vegas area, and we have okay. about I think eight or nine classes, uh, two to four hour classes that we're teaching there. And then we're teaching at the International Bakery Expo in October, and also eight or nine classes. So uh, we have a lot going on. We a do lot. have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so if you guys are interested in finding out more about what is going on with Roland and Marcia, they're classes, where they're going to be, uh, you know, more about their crafty classes or whatever, you know, that make sure that you uh, go over to, they have their YouTube channel where you can see their tutorials, uh, their Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash cake supplies plus, and then their website, uh, which is cake supplies plus.com. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much, Marsha, for coming on and joining us. Well, you're uh, welcome, and thank you for having me. Oh, it's been, and been fun. Anytime, anytime. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you so much, and uh, I guess we'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Bye bye. -bye.